Welcome to another episode of Higher Monday Night Hockey. I'm Simon Mason and I'll be talking you through the best of the top level English hockey action and this week's footage from the EHL KO16 from Barcelona. Starting in the Investec Women's Premier Division, we have all the action from Holcombe at home to Loughborough students and the match between Clifton Robinsons and Surbiton. In the Men's Premier Division, we've got full highlights from Brooklyn's Manchester University at home to Beeston, Old Georgian's visit to East Grinstead, Reading at home to Holcombe and Wimbledon against the University of Exeter. But first, we had two representatives in the EHL KO16 stage played in Barcelona over the weekend. The clubs entered directly into a knockout stage tournament with Hampson and Westminster first up against Dutch side HGC. Perhaps with that thought, oh, it's a great save. It's uh, given as the penalty corner. Shot goes hard and low, and it's slammed into the back of the net. And Hampstead and Westminster have the lead here from their very first penalty corner of the game. No chance there for the diving uh, Sam van der Ven. Having to face up to a corner here. And it's high this time, but the recipe is the same and Quan Brown launches himself into the big man's... <laughs> Torso there. Richard Smith. Uh, this time it's Richard Smith. We're going to have a pretty exciting last five minutes here. It's a different routine this time. It's half blocked. Is there a chance here? Yes, there is indeed. And it's Van Ass, the captain. And the game has gone from HGC. And it's Hammersted and Westminster. Surbiton then played the hosts, Real Club de Polo, in the final match of the opening day. Polo Club of Barcelona. Ball spin and left behind and flicked home and Surbiton have the lead. Beautifully converted there from Alan Forsyth. Oh, how about that for a response? Another penalty corner here for Surbiton, their fourth of the game. And another goal for Surbiton as well. Good save. And good defensive cover as well there. They got themselves onto the front foot. Now for Scythe looking busy on the ball. Always spells danger for the opponent. Well, I said they wanted a good start to the second half and they've got one. Let's watch it again here. Shot goes low, and there was a late deflection on I think, that took the ball. There's a move, it's a different routine this time. And it's disallowed, I think. It's disallowed, I think. No, <laughs> I beg your pardon, I thought the umpire was indicating he was unhappy there, but packed themselves with international quality. And they're threatening a fifth, and they're scoring a fifth here. And that surely is game, set and match. Well, that was a wonderful strike, wasn't it, from Forsyth? He had the space, but there was still a lot of work to be done. Those victories saw both sides progress into Sunday's KO8 matches. Hampstead and Westminster were once again up first, playing German and side Mannheim. Shot, shot goes in, good save by the goalkeeper. The Dutch club sides is actually remarkable. Taking advantage of a real scramble there. And Shot goes in low and perfectly placed. And Matt Guys Brown has proved to be lucky 13 again. A pass! Shells it low this time. A very relieved Mannheim celebrates a hard earned victory here against a very competitive Hampstead and Westminster who've given it everything. And Dinamo Kazan. Their earlier victory was a match against Russian side Dinamo Kazan for the right to progress to the next round. Free hit taken very quickly. Bounced off the foot of the Serbian player. Player allowed to go on. Good advantage here. What a chance this is, surely. Yes, Dinamo Kazan. Take the lead here. Further referrals very early. 
Uh, Royce whips one in and whips it into the back of the net and serve it in a back on terms here. Luke Taylor, number three, will take this one on. Taylor whips it in into the pads there of Gafaroff. Rebound from those pads, takes it outside the circle again. Farringdon. Oh, beautifully uh, touched home there and Servadon have the lead. Now Servadon working around. Look full of running here, there's the third. What a turnaround this is proving to be. Alan Versailles tucks it away. But uh, job well done for Surbiton. Frustration again, I'm afraid, for Dinamo Kazan. After the excitement of the EHL, we're back with some fantastic domestic action as we head to Holcomb with Loughborough students and visitors. Holcomb have won two and lost one of their opening games, while Loughborough have won one and lost two. Westwood. Straight strike on the top, well saved. Double save by Miriam Pritchard and the ball is still loose. Stuck underneath the pads of the Loughborough goalkeeper. Reaward again. Westwood strikes it towards Pritchard. Trunks can't quite gather the rebound. Westwood again goalwards and finally away by Pritchard. Once more out to Westwood's castle. Not her cleanest strike. But this one's gone in. Third time lucky for Joanne Westwood. Her first of the season and she gives the home side the lead. Students quick to try and wrestle back some sort of momentum in this game. Petter still going, is he? Petter, the ball back to Millington off the post. So close for the students. Steph Elliott loses the ball on the top of the knee, but she's won it back, Elliott, and fed it through to Davison. Trying to get round Pritchard. And the goalkeeper just about did enough to put her off. Ball's come all the way through to Trunks here. Bearing down on goal. Trunks, good save again. Miriam Pritchard out to meet the Holcomb striker. Steph Elliott can't quite get her shot away. Can she spin and work something else on goal? She can and it's inches away. From the bottom corner. Straight to Millington. And Millington strikes it straight through Rose Thomas. Lucy Millington equalises for Loughborough in the final 10 minutes. And there's no time for Holcomb to come back. Finishes here one all. Servers and travel to Clifton Robinsons looking to continue their 100% start to the season. Clifton produced a great result in their last home game, beating league champions Holcomb by two goals to one. Surbiton, the reigning champions on the front foot. Clifton Robinson trying to keep them out of the D and they can't on this occasion. An early chance. Well saved by Devissa, left foot away. Atkinson out to Ansley, Giselle Ansley. Incredible save by Devissa with the stick. Ball played in, lashes past the post. Absolutely massive aerial throw by Giselle Ansley and it's opened up now for Surbiton and Defrond. Devissa out to meet her, keeps the score at nil-nil. Into the second half, Surbiton trying to create something down the right hand side. Still going. Up against three or four Clifton Robertson defenders. Shot charged down, falls to Georgie Twig. 1 0 Surbiton. Georgie Twig powering it into the bottom corner. Sticks flying everywhere, and the ball has fallen to Sarah Evans. Sarah Evans, the Surbiton number seven, plays a neat. One, two, and a shot. Can't quite be deflected home on the far post. Not quite sure that was the routine, but it's almost worked for Clifton Robinson. Leach driving through the middle. 
Still going leech and she's played a fantastic ball forward to Claire Thomas. Thomas forces a double save from Sabi Heesh. Serpton still with that slender one goal lead. Trying to extend it here. Chance on the reverse, maybe. Yes. Great save again by Divisa. This time high to her left. Again, a chance on the reverse. And again, Divisa denies Surbiton. Chasing the game now, Clifton Robinsons. And Jenna Wolven has turned it over. Jenna Wolven bearing down on goal. High and over the bar. And that's how we'll finish. Surbiton victorious. 1 0. East Grinstead got off to a dream start against Buckingham with Amy Costello converting a penalty corner in the fourth minute. Abby Brandt equalised for the visitors in the 19th minute, meaning the points were shared. Two unbeaten teams faced each other in Manchester. Bowden having picked up five points from their opening fixtures, whilst Hampstead and Westminster's 100% record was on the line. The visitors took a two goal lead into the half time break thanks to goals from Joey Lee and Melanie Wilkinson. There were no goals in the third quarter before Jasmine Clark got Hampstead's third in the 55th minute. Rosie Bailey scored soon after to give the home side hope, but another from Wilkinson and Lee's third of the season put the game to bed. Hampstead and Westminster and Surbiton have maintained their 100% starts to the season, with Buckingham rounding out the current top four. At the bottom, Beeston are still looking for their first points of the year, just behind East Grinstead and Clifton Robinsons. division our first matches at Brooklands for the visit of Beeston. The home side have had a torrid start to the season losing all three matches conceding 20 goals. The visitors have also had a tough start with just three points to their name. Plenty of movement at the top of the circle it goes to the nearest castle finally good good save back in by Lush and Brooklands have the lead. Tom Lush fires it past Hushwan. And I can tell you, he enjoyed that. Initial save is a good one from the Beeson goalkeeper. Lush quickly pounces on the rebound. Chance for the Bees. Straight after conceding, Rocket down the baseline, just behind a sliding Nick Park. A good carry by the Spaniard and Nick Park just can't get it goalwards. Turned over at right half and Beeston will look to counter attack. It's a three on one now. Croft across to Griffiths and well out by Robbie Turner. Great work, Robbie. That work, Robbie. Griffiths' his first touch just takes the ball away from him and the on-rushing Robbie Turner does a good job of smothering the striker. Brooklyn's able to clear their lines. Still 1-0, good work down the right-hand side. Aiden Carre is up to Sam Perrin. He's actually played a little 1-2 with Lawrence and Perrin is still going spinning into the D and... It's been cleared off the line by Robbie Gleason, I believe. Perrin managed to scoop it underneath Hushwan. Robbie Gleason saves the beast and going two behind. 
Dixon off the line and away by Brooklands. Beeston knocking on the door. Adam Dixon denied by the postman and well away by Tom Russell. Dixon again blocked by Way and the whistle gone. Saving Brooklands. Adam Dixon again from the penalty corner. And then the swinging effort from Croft. Denied at the last minute by the Brooklands defender. Dixon off the top. Anyway, charges it down. Brave number one running. The Brooklands penalty corner defence team really keeping them in this game. Anyway, indicating they're all stick. Only a couple of minutes to go. Beeston still trailing 1-0 anyway. He's missed it. It's a chance for Adam Dixon versus the Brooklyn's captain Flanagan. He's found a foot, Adam Dixon. Two minutes to go. Penalty corner. Dixon slip behind. Willard's back across. Griffiths with the shot. Wonderful save by Turner. Again, Griffiths. And this time he's awarded a penalty stroke. It's Tom Russell on the floor. Slight variation at the corner. Initially a great save by Robbie Turner. And Tom Russell on the floor, dangles his stick out. Gives away the stroke. Devastation. For Brooklyn's who have led for about 60 minutes. Dixon equalizes for Beeston. The England and GB captain. Right into the corner of the net. Robbie Turner guessed the right way, but couldn't quite reach the powerful flick. Brooklyn's have been leading Beeston for almost the entirety of the game today at George's Road. Coming back from obviously that 12-0 defeat last week at the hands of Surbiton. And Adam Dixon has just taken that lead from them. So, Brooklyn straight away back on the attack and they've won a corner. David Flanagan onto the foot of the recent defender. Anyway! Gives Brooklyn's the lead again. Just moments after conceding the equaliser. Brooklyn's fire back. Anyway. Slings it past Hujwan. And you can see what it meant to the Brooklyn's players there. Final seconds now, a chance for Beeson. Batted away by Robbie Turner. Aiden Carres, former Beeson player, takes the ball away and lobs it down the line to Tom Russell. Beeson have pulled their goalkeeper. Russell has an open net. Whistle saving Beeston this time. Back stick, Tom Russell at the goal gaping. Just had to hit the ball on target. Desperate defence by Brooklands. They've won it back, Tom Russell again. Trying to kill the clock on the far touchline in front of the home crowd. And there it is, full time, Brooklands hang on. They've bounced back from their embarrassment last week to win this week 2-1 in dramatic circumstances. Old Georgians have had an amazing start to their top flight campaign and travelled to East Grinstead looking to continue their unbeaten run. East Grinstead won their previous home game with a comeback win over Brooklyn's. Get out of the centre right channel. And now it's to... Aubrey, James Aubrey driving down that right flank. Goal line pulls it back to Tyndall. And Tyndall beats Smith to make it. East Grinstead nil. Old Georgians won. Fourth minute in. Great start. Pull back across. And that's a poor touch. And it's being picked up by Ed Carson. Ed Carson playing it into Ward. Ward driving and Ward going for the acute angle when the pass back might have been the better option. Pull out to the... Right hand side, picked up by uh, Lee Morton. Morton with some good skill, still going Morton. Morton on the reverse stick, and that isn't too far wide. A chance here for a counter attack. Well, there's a big check in the middle of the park, but 
Morton continues to drive it forward. Morton, left and then right, and then the dive pass. Can they find the finish? Safe, buddy. No, they can't. Aubrey, just wide. Penalty corner comes to Ward. Ward drives, and it's a double block on the line. Then Faulkner gets it away. George Inns once again. Sam Ward, space on this right flank. If Ward can find the pass, indeed he can. Driving down the back as Aubrey pulls it back. And Ward on the half volley. And that's a great save by Smith. Carson goes to Smith's right. He hits the post and it's away. Tom Carson misses. Sanford playing it in. Carson with the shot. Comes back out again. Still there for OG. Or he screens to get it clear. They can't. Ball back in. Shot comes in from Sam Ward. And it's 2-0. Well, after the early breakthrough, it took another, well, nearly 35 minutes for the second goal to come. Sanford up off the foot of Piper. No one seems to stop apart from OG who are playing on. In comes the ball. Chance here for Ward on the reverse stick. And there, unmarked on the right-hand post to top in. Tap in is Tom Carson. And OG extend their lead. Their chance for East Grinstead into the circle. Opportunity perhaps, shot comes in. And uh, it's away by Pinner. Penalty corner goes to the right-hand castle. Mings looking for the deflection. Doesn't quite come off. Oh, it's kept in play by oh, Georgians. And a chance for another attack. Ball in. Here is Tom Carson. Tom Carson with a flick goal. Gets the rebound. Carson on the reverse. Two goals into the roof of the net. And Tom Carson makes it 4-0. What a game by... Old Georgians. Sam Ward later added a fifth from a penalty corner to make the final score East Grinstead nil. Old Georgians five. Reading hosted Holcomb looking to get their first points at home for the season, whilst the visitors would be keen to bounce back after defeat to Hampstead and Westminster last week. Penalty corner comes in and goes to the middle castles. And the drag flick is well saved. Banderak, little shift on and ball comes forward and here's an opportunity for Middleton. Middleton has a little look to his left hand side, he's one on one with the keeper. Middleton pushed out the, to his left and that's a good save by the keeper. Ellison then, up that central castle and good save by Curtis. Out to this right hand side, Reading looking to make the breakthrough if they can. Still across when they get it. Well, can they get the cross in? It does come in and Kiniston is there. <laughs> Terry Kiniston steals it at the near post to break the deadlock. 29 minutes in. It's Reading 1, Holcomb 0. Out to that right-hand side. This is Edwards. Edwards picks out Banderak. Banderak, Trussler gets half a touch. And here's an opportunity for Field. And Reading's lead lasts barely a minute. Reading, having just conceded the equaliser. Can they find a go-ahead goal just before half-time? Ball comes in. Bachu! Oh, he's still in front of O'Keefe. And Jatinda Bachu makes it three goals in four minutes. And Reading lead 2-1. Here is Moen. Moen still going. Looking for the pass. Banderak. Oh, here's a chance for Banderak. And that's a good save. And the deflection goes wide. Edwards gets it. Oh, the shot has taken a deflection and it falls back to Edwards. And it's all level once again. Just shy of the hour mark. Jeremy Edwards makes it 2 all. So, Holcomb having just got back on level terms. Can they play some keep ball? Ball comes forward looking for Middleton. Well, Middleton in round the back. A chance here for Holcomb perhaps. Across it comes. Oh, it's gone in. It's been bundled in. Not the cleanest of goals for Harry Trussler, but he won't mind. His first goal of the season. And Reading still winless this season. Holcomb bounced back. Final score, Reading 2. Holcomb 3. The final game of the weekend saw Wimbledon at home to the University of Exeter. Wimbledon were unbeaten going into this one, whilst Exeter gained their first points of the season last week against Reading.
Here's how the table stands. Old Georgians top the pile, although Surbiton can reclaim that with their game in hand. At the bottom, Reading are the only side yet to win, and above them there are four teams all sitting on three points. That's all for tonight's show. Join us again next week for another Monday Night Hockey.